the odds, a former Olathe East football player who suffered a major brain injury during a game is making strides in his recovery. Now we caught up with James McGinnis at Aquatic Therapy today. He's walking completely on his own now and getting back some of those fine motor skills like snapping his fingers and buttoning. Pretty impressive for someone given a 7% chance of survival. James will be the Grand Marshal of the Amy Thompson Run and Walk this Monday, supporting the Brain Injury Association of Kansas and Greater Kansas City. He went from waking up from a coma and not being able to do anything but move one hand uh, to you know, learning how to eat, to speak, to walk, talk. It's truly been a blessing just to see how far I have come from since the injury. Oh, so good to see him. And James will be walking the 2K himself, and he invites all of you to walk with him. Our own Larry Moore will be emceeing that event. And again, the Amy Thompson Walk and Run is Monday. You can sign up online at KMBC.com. Nine can help. We're raising money to send more veterans to Kansas City, uh, from Kansas City to Washington, where they see memorials built in their honor. KMBC 9's Matt Evans shows us the sights and sounds of previous Heartland Honor flights. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. In Washington, D.C., thank you very much for this service. The veterans on the Heartland Honor Flight getting the thanks they deserve. Shows a lot of respect. Makes me cry. I didn't expect anything like this. God bless you all. Oh, I, I can't say anymore. Thank you for your service. Welcome to your memorial, Richard. World War II veterans get to see the memorial built in their honor. I've seen it on the TV, but it's beautiful to see here. And I don't think there are words that are adequate to, to describe what you see here and certainly not what you feel here. This whole thing is great, great. It makes you glad that you're an American citizen. At the Korean War Memorial. Oh, I want to break down and cry. The monuments bring back a lot of memories. I think back of the, the days that I was in <laughs> The days that I was in Korea. <laughs> and I'm really thankful that the Lord saw me through. And I really appreciate all of this. An emotional day always has an emotional end. With thousands of people welcoming these veterans home at KCI, each one wanting to shake the hands of a hero. Matt Evans, KNBC 9 News. These trips made possible by the generosity of you, our KNBC 9 News viewers. Yeah, and we want to thank all of you who've donated to the Heartland Honor Flight. And if you'd still like to donate, you can still find a link on our website, KNBC.com. Still time. Yep. That's such a cool story. Every time we go out there. It sure is. Well, Memorial Day weekend, that's what we have going on right now. And uh, because of that, I know a lot of folks are concerned about some of these remembrances and celebrations that will be going on. So that's one of the things that we're going to be continuing to talk about, at least over the next couple. I wanted to just show you radar because we do have some showers, Chris and Kelly, that are out there. Not going to be as heavy as yesterday. And I'll show you also the area that has the better chances for severe weather. And it's well west of Kansas City. But we have a storm moving up north, Smithville, first alert for Trimble. Wood Heights, Excelsior Springs, you're going to get on that. Here's the action as we put it in animation mode. Moving from south to north, heaviest once again from Platte to Clay counties. Farther out to the west in all these counties of blue, that's a severe thunderstorm watch, which is right now west of Topeka, and I think that's where the better chances for the more violent or stronger storms will be. Now, still some hail from some of these, probably up to pea size hail, about ready to head back up toward Liberty. Also, just south of Smithville, heavier rain starting to clear south of the river, but let's look at some places where people may be going to, like Starlight. Right now, clear, looking at Swope Park. You see the rain up to the north of the river, but right now, Kauffman Stadium is dry. Wish I could say the same, at least the last time I checked out toward Children's Mercy Park. Yes, yeah, Sporting KC still has a light shower. We had a camera out there at the beginning of our newscast, so there are some downpours, and that is affecting the start of the match. Farther west, though, that's where we see more abundant thunderstorms, and that is a severe thunderstorm watch. Once again, Wichita under the gun, but all these little shapes you see in yellow 
are severe thunderstorm warnings rather than tornado warnings. And I think that's at least an improvement, although it is still wet. And speaking of wet, we had a shower on the plaza not too long ago. Current temperature 73. As I say, pack the umbrella underneath your arm if you're going to be heading out. Winds are out of the west at six miles an hour. High humidity, about a third of an inch of rain officially at KCI. That stacks up pretty well. Lawrence, though, almost an inch of rain since midnight. Half an inch in Olathe, Sedalia. You're about to get some more showers that'll be moving through, but right now your official is at zero. Look at the rainfall amounts across the area. Still down to the southeast, skimpy. We're talking 1 100th for Warrensburg, Chillicothe, only about 9 one hundredths of an inch. You know that the mold count's going to go up. Pollen stays high. This time grass as opposed to mulberry. There it is. Mold count continuing to rise because of the rain. We're looking for green air quality. Good as far as pollution is concerned tomorrow. Uh, 80s where it has not rained or clouds, 70s rain cooled air over us, 73 also down toward Butler. So here's the official forecast for the Royals game. I'm thinking that it may be delayed. They may have to keep the tarp on for a little bit longer. Still a chance off and on over the sports complex later on this evening and temperatures falling back into the 60s. Then on the other side of state line, sporting KC as DC United comes in. I still think, as you saw, there's a rain shower right now. Not much thunder, but let's at least go for rain. Temperatures only falling back to the 70s and a 60% chance of those showers. Here's what FutureScan thinks is going to happen. That lifts out still often on showers through, say, the evening. I think overnight we could still see a shower or two. We're still under a flash flood watch, but let's hope that we don't get too much in the way of heavy, abundant rain showers. Then a couple will flare up on Saturday afternoon, but did you notice they don't last long? That's the variety that will be fairly active in the afternoon. Then after the sun goes down, they'll diminish, and I think that will be the same situation on Sunday and even on Monday too. Here's that forecast, 60 to 78 degrees on Saturday. That 30% chance not lasting long, not as heavy. Sunday, the same situation, only about a 20% chance, and I'm brave enough to take the rain off the board for a change as opposed to using the same icons. 61 to 83 degrees then. Memorial Day still has a chance of some pop-up showers and thunderstorms, a summertime variety, but then back to rain chances Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So although it's an abbreviated work week, it looks like Mother Nature will pick up Working on rain for us. 60s in the morning, afternoon highs in the upper 70s. By Friday, another chance to dry out. 56 in the morning, afternoon highs 74 with mostly sunny skies. Yeah, but that's next Friday. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, about that. Patience, patience, my friend. Yeah, I yeah, guess no. it'll teach us that, won't mm. it? Thanks, sir. Well, staying close to their daughter, the president and first lady plan to stay in D.C. until their youngest daughter graduates high school. The Obamas have reportedly signed a lease on this 8,200 square foot tutor in the Georgetown area. Plenty of space for his family and the Secret Service. The house has nine bedrooms. Well, it's necessary. Yeah. And eight and a half baths. Folks at the National Spelling Bee this week turning the tables on an Internet troll. That Twitter user made fun of a special couch at the competition for children who've just been eliminated. It lets them calm down. Well, using an expletive, the person wrote, you lost, suck it up. Quit teaching kids it's okay to lose. Now, take a close look. Spelling bee organizers caught the error too. Lose is misspelled. Of course it is. The tweet has been deleted and the user has apparently deleted his account. Are you on Team Buzzy or Team Trebek? A Jeopardy contest has the internet divided this afternoon. Who is You Aren't Rid of Me Yet, Trebek? Who is Once More, Trebek? Once More. You're going to pursue this theme as long as you're the champ, aren't you? Buzzy Cohen has won nine days in a row, winning $164,000. It's not his smarts, it's his snark that has people talking. What do you think? Is it arrogance or adorable when he wagers zero on final jeopardy to goof around? What is See You Tomorrow, Trebek? <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> Twitter users posting comments from both sides like Buzzy Cohen looks like a kid I would push into a locker. It's <laughs> oh, a little harsh. Or Buzzy Cohen is my soulmate. All right. Uh, an out of this world trick by a legendary athlete. We've been battling gravity our whole lives. Today we get to try some tricks that we've only ever dreamed about. That's Tony Hawk and Aaron Hamaki attempting some weightless tricks in zero gravity, getting to avoid the force which left them cut up and with some broken bones. Hawk says it's not easy. He said you have so many ideas and once you're weightless, you just forget what to do. Hey, hey, it's the Monkees. For the first time in 20 years, the band is releasing a new album called Good Times. Of course, it's minus the late Davy Jones. Although his voice is featured on one song, the album includes the uh, three surviving band members, Mickey Dolmans, Michael Nesmith, and Peter Tork. You know, Michael Nesbitt wouldn't tour f with these guys for the longest time. I still have a 45 at home. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people do. <laughs>
<laughs> a prank catches the artsy crowd off guard. What one teen tried to pass off as art. Now the prank turns criminal. Why this notorious prankster was arrested this week. And a water bottle trick has everyone on their feet. How valuable that water bottle is today. Man, oh man, live pictures, the drive home. Looks like, you know, it's getaway day, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's I-35, Johnson yeah. Drive, and uh, northbound, southbound, nobody uh, getting any breaks right now. Uh, you'd like to think some of that is normal, mm. but I'm not sure. It's a slow getaway. Yeah, very. Yeah. Uh, a simple trick by a high school senior has taken over the internet. You see the reaction, that's Mike Senator, a senior at Charlotte, North Carolina. His water bottle trick, as you see, brought the audience to their feet. That was at his high school's talent show. Now, videos of the trick have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times. Now, someone, if you want to know, someone has put what they claim is the actual water bottle on eBay, signed by Mike, the top bid, $15,100. And by the way, that trick might seem a little goofy, but many have tried it in the newsroom, and it Take some skill. It takes a lot of skill. Take some yeah. skill. Well, a very artistic gotcha at San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art. All right, take a look at this. 17 year old prankster put a pair of glasses on the floor, a postmodern looking glass masterpiece. Apparently, many people thought so. They stopped, they looked, they even took pictures. The teen who put those glasses there tweeted the experience. Of course, it's gotten one or two retweets, about 45,000 to to be exact. <laughs> a prank turns criminal though as one YouTuber climbs that famous Hollywood sign. His name Vitali, the video posted late Wednesday after climbing the sign. Now later that night he was arrested. In fact, he has more than 9 million subscribers to his YouTube channel and one of his videos is a compilation showing him getting arrested at various pranks. A Bangor, Maine police officer getting quite a laugh after meeting up with a man with an interesting tattoo. All right, the knuckle tattoos spell out a negative message about police, obviously, but the uh, police officer posted a photo Monday to his Facebook page showing the man and the officer getting a laugh out of his ink. They know he had some issues with police early on in his life, but that's now changed. Police asked him to move from where he was over the weekend. He cooperated, so instead of grabbing handcuffs, they grabbed a camera. He got somebody with a sense of humor, at least, yeah. Well, a space show you won't want to miss. When to mark your calendars if you want to see Mars. Plus, imagine uh, having this to zoom over during the morning or evening commute, where this will be tested. This is KNBC 9 News at 4 with Laura Moritz, Kelly Ackerman, and first alert weather with chief meteorologist Brian Busby. Stargazers and sky watchers mark this astronomical event on your calendar. This Monday, Mars will be the closest it's been to Earth in more than 10 years. NASA posting this picture on Facebook. A clear look at Mars through a high powered telescope as it approaches. The exact time to check it out Monday, 4.35 p.m. Central Time. The red planet will be, get this, 46,762,695 miles away. <laughs> and that is the closest it's been since October 5th, 2005. Experts say that without a good telescope, you probably won't see much. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Kelly Uckerman. With Chief Meteorologist Brian Busby, I'm wondering with the possibility of more rain on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I was in the Marvin the Martian yeah. rotation because yeah. you may not be able to see it because of the clouds. Say, yeah. With the clouds out there, you're not going to see Mars. That's really good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we have some clouds overhead and some showers and thunderstorms. Heaviest right now moving from Clay County into southern portions of Clinton County. 30, 40 mile an hour winds are possible. A little bit of hail associated with this as well. Continues to lift away from the immediate metro. Still some showers also eastern portions of Jackson County and Lafayette County. Let's look at Kansas side. Way out to the west, that's where there's a severe thunderstorm watch. Now including any of our counties. I don't anticipate damaging winds or damaging hail nearby, but we are going to be in and out of the rain showers, and that includes part of the reason why they've decided to postpone the start of the sporting Kansas City match until 830. Here's a closer look at Smithfield Trimble, as I gave you that first alert about a half hour ago, heading through Kearney, moving up to the north, and this is still part of a complex that will continue to move through with some fairly torrential rainfall, but hopefully not too much of a flooding situation like we had yesterday. Starting to dry back out on the plaza, just showing you how quickly these things move in and out, but we'll have other rounds moving through. And it looks like storms, even for the holiday, as Chris mentioned, even on Monday, we will dry out finally within the seven-day forecast, but probably not soon enough for most people's tastes. We weren't the only ones seeing torrential storms Thursday. 
Look at that. Heavy rains and winds slamming this area of Texas. Some drivers ended up stranded.